Welcome to Peace Vision. We are a portal for positive change. And today, I have a very special guest on. She happens to be related to me. And please welcome Bonnie to me. Bonnie, how are you? Good, John. Good, John. It's a good day here in Gloucester. Congratulations on your new book. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, for those who don't know, Bonnie's new book is about mental illness, and it's very personal. It's something that she experienced firsthand. And today we want to kind of get some tips from Bonnie about how to deal with mental illness. First of all, Bonnie, when you first were diagnosed, what were the symptoms? Did you even know that there was anything going on with you? At first I did. <clears throat> During high school, I felt very stressed. There was something wrong more than stress. And I remember confiding in friends, oh no, you just stressed out. And I thought, no, there's something more. Because it was sort of a disconnect, an awkward disconnect that didn't feel right or didn't think right. Yeah, so I knew there was something wrong. And when did it manifest itself in your life to where, you know, it was obvious that something had to be done or you had to be diagnosed with mental illness? Right. Um, I had a breakdown or a meltdown when I was 17, a uh, senior in high school. It was September. And I had been going through all these horrifying delusions and feelings and thoughts. And it was crazy. And I ended up uh, just totally, you know, letting it out at the kitchen table. And um, that was the first time my family knew there was really something wrong. So I was trying to hide it all that time. Right, right, understandably. And then from the time that everybody else realized something's going on, what were the challenges to getting the help that you really needed and, and to being diagnosed? Yeah, well, my parents went through many agencies before then. Uh, they call it bridge feather agencies and trying to feel what is wrong with her? Why is she so high on drugs? Why doesn't she come home? You know, a lot of um, things were destroyed in my life because of substance use. And then, and then I got off completely, which is good. But then right after that, my symptoms came back with a mental illness. And I, I challenged, after that, we tried to get help and um, there wasn't much. You know, um, they had to get a grasp on it, um, of course. And it was very difficult for them because they didn't know where to go. They wouldn't, they wouldn't talk to my family. They kept it a secret. My dad said, well, when it disappears, you won't have all that baggage. Um, but what he didn't know was that it just doesn't disappear. It's something you deal with, you know, the rest of your life. So, so they didn't know where to go. Yeah, you know. And then what was your, you know, not that there's a final diagnosis, but what was the diagnosis that you believe was the most accurate? Uh, schizoaffective. Um, I was diagnosed that when I was 24. And it's a little bit of schizophrenia, but not the full blown. It's sort of just like, I might get a little paranoid or disconnected in my thoughts and I get very depressed. So that's kind of what I have. And, um, you know, sometimes I have mood swings. Sometimes I might get high, not like um, a full-blown manic episode, which is good, but just high in the mood. And then I tell myself, when I crash, I'm going to go bad because I'm aware of it. Um, and then I'll crash and get very depressed. So that takes a while just to balance myself out to recover from it. Um, but, uh, so that's been going on for quite a lot, you know, my whole life, really. So, yeah, um, that's the most accurate, I think, that they've gotten it. Um, and, and what have you found uh, after that diagnosis? What has been the most effective way for you to deal with this illness? I think medication is number one. Having family support and having um, an outside influence with friends, school, work, um, therapists, doctors, um, the whole gamut of living a normal life, um, going to college, you know. And then I think what really helped John is my family, you know, we had a lot of frustration 
but they loved me very much and they helped me as much as they could. And I believe the ways in which they helped me was so invaluable. It was so important to me. Um, yeah, like bringing me to the church, the Catholic church, back to the church and people there. And they just supported me on my art, my hobbies, and they were there for me. They never gave up. They never, so you, never, said, right, you, never felt, you never you never felt alone or abandoned, which I guess is a really big deal, right? I never did because they never abandoned me. I think when I was very young, I had those feelings, but um, maybe I did for a little while. But then um, I don't know. I, I think my mother was a great advocate for me, you know, and um, uh, so she was she was really strong for me and helping me stay at home. Yeah. Nothing like a mother's love always, right? Yeah, and then exactly. you, you decided to write a, a book about your experiences. Why did you decide to do that? I wanted to help people. I wanted to think hopefully someone could read my story and read my experience and say, hey, wait a minute. I went through that. Maybe, maybe I, I can relate to that or somehow connect with that, what I went through. Um, what I hope is someone can take some advice from the book and apply it to their life. You know, um, hopefully they don't make as many mistakes as I did. You know, maybe it could be a guide and, and you know, uh, just let people know that they're not alone. If what they feel is normal, even if it's symptoms, you know, um, just, just to hang in there. Let's just hang in there and keep trying and not to give up because it's possible to get through a lot of trauma and a lot of disappointment and a lot of hurt. But, you know, people always say, oh, you knew life, you moved on. Well, I never really liked that phrase because you carry what you have, who you are for the rest of your life. You don't split it up like that. It's a clean flow. And you don't stop learning. You don't stop living and learning. You just keep doing that. Keep learning and living and um, going by your own example. You have to. Now, like, like introspective, like be into yourself. And I hope that when people read my book, they can notice the roller coaster of the ups and downs and just to say, well, she's been through a lot. You know, maybe... I can do the same. Maybe I can do it. You know, um, I just really hope to help people. That's really my my main goal in life yeah. is just to help people. Well, well, I think this book book will certainly do it. And the book is called Free, Sweet Freedom: Mending a Heart Broken by Mental Illness. And where can we get this book? You can buy it um, on Amazon or SDP Publishing, uh, Barnes and Noble, or an ebook. And what advice, if there's one piece of advice that you would give to somebody that may be in the same situation that you're in that has been struggling with mental illness and hasn't really dealt with it, what, what would you say to that person? That's tough if I don't know them. <clears throat> but I, I think the best advice, and they don't want to deal with it, um, or don't know how, um, If I knew that person, I would just want to be their their friend, their mentor, and sort of just tell them, hey, you know, I went through this and I got through it. I had this family struggle and I got through it because I realized they did love me because they did A, B, and C. You know, really think it through. Um, and, and just say, hey, just get up. You can't sit down and do nothing because that's not going to bring you anywhere. You need to get up out of the chair and actually do something with your life. You need to do something with your life. You need to get a job or enroll in college or make a friend, you know, um, sitting in one place, you know, whether it's at home or a residence or wherever you are, just thinking about it isn't going to help. You need to actually do. You need to actually do something. You need to go out in the world and experience the world and welcome the world. 
um, because the beautiful place to live in is dangerous sometimes, but it's really not that bad. And once, and if you can achieve that, you know, um, it, it's great. Things are made much better, you know? That's great yeah. advice. I think that's great advice for everybody, whether you struggle with mental illness or not, you know, going out there and making things happen. Once again, the book is Sweet Freedom, Mending a Heart Broken by Mental Illness. And our author is Bonnie Toomey. Thank you so much for being with us at Peace Vision. We wish you all the best. And before we have you uh, take off on us, what's next on your list? You've, you've published this book. What's on your agenda? I started my second book. It's called okay. Beyond Sweet Freedom. <laughs> Beyond, I'm sorry? Beyond Sweet Freedom. Oh, wonderful. And what's the, what's the message in that book? Wait, I just started it. I, I sort of um, took off from where I left on my first book. It's a lot about living in my um, um, cluster. And what I experienced here, being alone, and how I moved forward from there, how I protected myself from being alone, how scary that is, and um, just, just how beautiful. I don't know. I just started it, so I can't really explain it we'll yet. See. I don't have like a vision. We'll, we'll have to check back with you as you progress, but thank you for caring about others. You know, it's one thing to struggle on your own, but for you to, as a first-time author, I assume, to write such a personal story in the hopes of helping other people is really awesome. So congratulations, and, and, and that, I think that's just amazing. Aw, thank you, John. Yeah. It was nice being, it's like meeting you. Great being <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for so long. Okay, well, we'll check back with you soon, and we wish you all the best, Bonnie. Thank you, you too. Take care.